Hi, this is Shady. So wrist locks are not common in today's judo. Obviously, they're banned in competition, being very dangerous in the stand-up, especially with the amount of movements and explosiveness in the gripping. And a lot of people want to commit to their grips. So something like wrist locks can be incredibly hazardous and I understand why. So today we'll be looking at them from the book of Arima and his book was published in 1919 and uh, it has a lot of basic Gokyo stuff but including leg locks and wrist locks so I've never talked about wrist locks except in the context of uh, arresting techniques but today just from the pure judo perspective so what I really like about this if you know some Japanese you will know that there is uh, tsukuri and kake written. So these words are used when we are uh, creating a throw, actually, you know, on balance, you position yourself, and then you execute. And I really like that within the context of wrist locks, they're also used. So the first one you're looking at is on the right hand side because Japanese books go from right to left. And you see it is uh, called gyaku yubi or reversed fingers. So what you do is you take and you pull because if you take someone's hand and you just lift it upwards obviously they're not gonna let you so you pull same way as you unbalance someone and from there you can uh, reverse the palm towards you and then to execute it you just lift your uh, hand upward and you can see so it can come from a lot of gripping and self-defense scenarios hence why you can pull and get away and from there you can lift up the second one it looks a lot like a waki gatame it is uh, called uh, kote hishigi or wrist crush so how you do is you you can see here from this standing waki gatame so you pull the arm towards you you position yourself in this position however you don't crush the elbow in this one but rather you grip the wrist and the outside of the hand and then you pull it in uh, towards the elbow and that's how you actually crush the wrist but like a lot of wrist locks the elbow needs to be pinned but this one here is a straight pin on the elbow so obviously you can get it on the ground as well from this one now Another variation of Kote Hishigi is this one. So instead of uh, pinning the elbow, which I find it far more controlling, this one, uh, we'll see it later in the demonstration. You see here, it's the same. You get away and then you both, uh, not the thumbs on the outside of the arm and the fingers on the inside of the palm, and then you push downward uh, towards in the direction of their shoulder and their elbow and of course that's where you get the uh, breaking mechanism of the wrist it is classical um, there's not much techniques into this book there's a lot of science though which will be discussed maybe in a different video and uh, here you can see those basic wrist locks but what i really liked is that they really use uh, tsukuri and kake so how you position yourself how you create it and then later when they're unbalanced how you execute so even the very logic of throwing and judo in the stand-up still applies to standing submissions which is something i really liked about this book and that's why i decided to share it with you today now this one here not really much into the wrist lock however now you get close you get high up the elbow so it's ude garami from the standing and same applies you need to pull you need to unbalance you need to uh, collapse someone's posture you can't just go into someone grab their arm and uh, try to manipulate it that's not how it works uh, unbalancing or collapsing someone's posture is highly important also applies for standing submissions so for example uh, a front headlock they need to be completely uh, bending over and with a destroyed posture same with these arm locks. So this one here you see is ude garami. So uh, leg, uh, I'm sorry, hand entanglement. And it's the same as if someone maybe is trying to strike or trying to do something. You pull the arm in, you entangle it, and then you move forward. But never 
when they are incredibly static and having control over their own uh, posture or their own uh, you know, basically their own personal space that's also very important so uh, here you see an example obviously in on the ground it's only from the uh, I'm sorry I mean in competition it's only on the ground uh, to avoid you know unnecessary injuries now let's take a look at some of these self-defense scenarios where you can see some of those that we just saw so now here you see he is uh, staying away creating distance against strikes which is very logical but now when he starts to get into uh, a wrist locking you will see that it is coming from mostly grappling so or where there is a lot of gripping involved and this is where he can take advantage so you see here the grip now you can either throw or lock the arm but uh, i found this uh, kyuzo mifune demonstration to be very uh, versatile so here you see a wrist lock blocking the elbow we've seen this a lot when it comes to uh, arresting techniques uh, but uh, from self-defense also you can come here here notice how he uh, drops down collapses now this one it was a drop uh, seoe otoshi but also you can wrist lock from this position as well by turning into them so here you see this is the uh, kote hishigi that we saw uh, later the second uh, variation so you see you need to pull you need to make sure they're not standing firm they're not standing strong and from there you can manipulate whatever part of their body whether it's their feet with uh, reaping and sweeping or it can be their wrist now for competition purposes we know that this is not uh, viable but again this is what I really liked about this uh, book is that he treats these little techniques and joint manipulation the same way he treats the throws. So we know that we need to have this collapsed uh, posture in order to get uh, that effect that we desire. That's why a lot of people uh, criticize wrist lock, especially in the standing or Aikido. But understanding Kuzushi and uh, Tsukuri and Kake anything uh, is possible someone that is completely destroyed you can do anything to them that's why on the ground they're far more effective because you are limiting so many of their choices they're not in their natural element they're, they're they have their back against the whole earth and then you you are isolating something and doing it so that's why a lot of people say it's the best martial art on the ground or on on, on the planet etc but no you have to understand that you can collapse someone isolate or whatever you are gripping and then from there you do whatever throw strangle or even uh, standing joint locks so if you have something to add please let me know down below this was shady and thank you for listening